Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Second Art Jesus Catholic Church. Those who are with us in person here, first and foremost, God bless you. As well, anyone who is participating online, either live or sometime today. Uh, we have some beautiful flowers in the sanctuary. Uh, they were donated by, uh, first of all, a group of ladies from the Red Hat Society here in the village. They are. Uh, they were donated in memory of Marlene Smeagol of our parish, who was a member of that group, uh, and her anniversary came up, and they were at Mass uh, last night. There were five of them wearing their red hats. And also, the other flowers were donated by Mark and Christine Kurowski in celebration of their 52nd wedding anniversary. Uh, just a couple of reminders. Uh, we do have a special collection today, the Home Mission Collection. 40% of the diocese in the United States are still considered missionary, including ours, because there are more than a few parishes that are so small they can't, uh, on their own, financially support the uh, needs, pastoral needs of the parish. So please, we uh, thank you if you've already put something in the, a basket or in the box of the narthex or at the uh, uh, exits. And if not, certainly you can do so in the next week or so uh, to support uh, the mission uh, parishes throughout the United States. And I want to let you know, uh, I talked last weekend, at least in some masses, about music at mass and the consideration given COVID and wearing of masks, where that fits in. As you know, we've not been doing uh, much music and we started uh, reintroducing the responsorial psalm uh, sung uh, the last number of weekends. However, uh, I think as I was listening, I didn't hear too much response from you. Maybe it's because you don't have Miss Let's in front of you with the words and the music, Whatever it might be, uh, I decided we're going to go back to reciting the responsorial song. I was at the uh, Christmas Mass on Monday, and for the first time, I actually wore the mask, uh, as all the priests did, for the whole Mass, and other than coming up for communion. And uh, I found it very challenging, especially if you have to speak for any length of time, or certainly even trying to sing. So uh, the bishop had indicated he wants us until we're able to be more free at Mass without these masks uh, to uh, keep Mass shorter than we normally would, which we have, and uh, taking away the music for now uh, certainly uh, contributes to that. So again, uh, I know there's many of us that love music and know that music is an integral part of the liturgy. Let's just give thanks to God for right now that we have the Mass to come to, that we have God's Word proclaimed and preached, and we receive Jesus' body and blood. And now let's stand, please, as we begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries on this 20th Sunday in ordinary time, let's pause for a moment as we come before the Lord, ever seeking God's mercy for those times we have seen. Lord Jesus, you are full of goodness and kindness. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are full of mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are full of the healing power that comes from God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. And now let's praise our God by reciting the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things, which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things, and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. book of Isaiah contains the words of a prophet who lived after the Jews returned from exile. Today's passage speaks of salvation being offered to all, regardless of ethnic origin or social condition. Christians have seen this in anticipation of the message that Jesus will preach. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O oh God, God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the people in equity, the nations of the earth, you God. O oh God, let all the nations pray. May the people's God pray. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear Him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. Today's reading is the conclusion of Paul's thoughts about how Jewish people are going to participate in the saving grace of Jesus. Paul was Jewish and he loved his own people. He was disappointed that most of them had not accepted the gospel. Paul hoped that his success in converting the Gentiles would encourage the Jewish people to take a second look at the message of Jesus. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their master. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I wonder how many of you were like me and blessed uh, when you were younger to be able to sit down and talk to a elderly uh, grandparent, in my case it was a grandparent, about the way things were in their growing up years or in their experience. I hope some of you did because I always found it very fascinating to speak to my grandmother, who was born in 1899 and who had many uh, things to share about her life once her family moved from Pennsylvania, where she was born, to Altus, Arkansas. All the things that went into their way of life, a farming life, a tough life in some ways, but also a very rewarding life. I have to say I wish that I had had the opportunity to do the same thing with my grandfather, my dad's dad, whom I was named after. Unfortunately, he died when I was six or seven years old. So I never got to sit down 
and get his perspective. He was born, I think, in 1895, or maybe a little sooner or later than that. I think what my grandmother told me about him and his situation made me pause and think. Here he was, born in the United States, but his parents had immigrated from the German-Swiss border and being a Catholic in the state of Arkansas, where you think we have few Catholics in Arkansas now, can you imagine what it was like back in the early 1900s? Something tells me that outside of that little circle in Altus, Arkansas, that had many German Catholics, that there are those who lived in other areas outside of Altus and Ozark and Coal Hill and other little towns up there that saw my grandfather and my great-grandfather and family as being foreigners. Foreigners who had come to our country and maybe in their minds didn't belong. And then my grandfather was uh, drafted for World War I and went off to serve his country only after marrying my grandmother. They were married in 1970 and then he was sent off to war. She used to tell me about letters both written to him and received back from him. Can you imagine World War I against Germany? My grandfather with definite German roots. His, grandpa his father probably uh, didn't speak but German, and I'm sure my grandfather was bilingual, German and English. Again, some of his fellow soldiers may have seen him as being a foreigner, maybe suspicious of him since our country was fighting against Germany, wondering where his true allegiance was. Well, I would hope that by the end of his time in the service, when he returned, at least the soldiers that served with him recognized him in a different light, saw him in a different light as certainly worthy of their respect and to consider him uh, a very loyal United States citizen. I bring that up because in today's first reading of gospel, we have that sense of outsider, uh, as the first reading uh, spoke of, uh, a person who is a uh, foreigner. And we have a foreigner in today's gospel, the Canaanite woman, whom it was obvious the disciples responded very badly to trying to keep her away from Jesus. And we have to say even Jesus recognized her initially as a foreigner, making the comment, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But what did Jesus do? Welcomed that foreigner who was a woman who in those days was not permitted to speak to or to be spoken to from a rabbi. Jesus let her speak to him, and he spoke to her. And the more he got to know her, the more he accepted her and recognized her as a person of great faith, which she showed herself to be. And when Jesus uh, let her leave, let it be done for you. The woman accepted his word and went home and found her daughter well. Important for us on uh, a day such as this when we read these readings to look at our own lives and say, do we have the welcoming attitude that Jesus showed not only here 
But in the story of the centurion whose servant was sick, or the Samaritan woman, or the woman caught in adultery, do we recognize that in God's eyes, there's no such thing as a foreigner? We're all sojourners on this earth. And many throughout the world, those Christian and those of other faiths, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, all have the opportunity at salvation. And we're not to look at them in a negative light as not worthy of God's or our attention. I can remember my Uncle Paul, who lived after serving 21 years in the Army, lived in retirement in Japan. And there were a couple of times where some of our family members just kidded, it's probably not good kidding, but kidded him about living amongst all of those, recognizing very few Christians in Japan, living amongst all those heathens. And my uncle's reply, and this is an uncle who grew up being taught that only Catholics can be saved, said, I know of many Japanese Buddhists that are much better people than Christians, some who say they are Christians that I know. He grew in his appreciation of recognizing them as blessed by God and worthy of respect. Just like I, when I found out a number of years ago through a distant cousin who did a family tree on my mom's side that my great-grandfather on my mom's side was Jewish. And the more I read about him and my grandmother, great-grandmother coming together, and she was Catholic, of how they must have been treated. Both she, from some in her Catholic faith, marrying this foreigner, at least in religious, in religious respect, and vice versa. They received much, uh, you might say, persecution. The name Bilts, which I'm very proud of, had to be changed over the years, or was, out of fear of repercussions because of my great-grandfather's Jewish heritage. And yet, I say, thanks be to God, my great-grandmother saw in him a good man, a faithful man, a man worthy of her attention and worthy of being her husband. And I'm thankful, obviously, because if they had to come together, and formed their union in God and brought their children into the world, the dawn down the line, I wouldn't be here today. Ever thankful that they were open to one another in their backgrounds and in their faith and made it work and withstood all the negativity that perhaps came their way. To me, today's readings, there are two words that are stick out in my mind. Faith, which above all things, we need to respect no matter where a person is from and what faith tradition they follow, as long as it's in line with and uh, reflects, at least implicitly, the ways of Jesus Christ, the way of love and mercy, and the word all, which helps us to recognize in God's eyes, we are all worthy of his love and of loving one another. Today's first reading, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. O God, let all the nations praise you. St. Paul, for God delivered all to disobedience that he had, might have mercy upon all. It led me to think 
this very popular song. And I wish we would have been able to sing in the beginning and hope that it reflects what is truly in our hearts, even if we aren't able to sing it with our lips. It's the song, All Are Welcome. And you're certainly welcome to sing at least the refrain with me. The first verse goes, Let us fill the house where love can dwell, and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of homes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall in division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Hopefully in our hearts every day. Continue to strengthen her in faith and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations throughout the world, may God grant them a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families experiencing strife, may the peace of Christ bring an end to division and repair broken relationships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Lord help us in using our gifts for his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they experience the mercy of God and rest in his eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those special intentions we hold dear to our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those celebrating birthdays, 
In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you of elders worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray for partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Father, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Let's turn away the peace of Christ to those around us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Pray for us.